Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience on this uh, night before Halloween 2023. We're going to be talking about the Night of Swords today. What's going on? What's up, man? I love your shirt, brother. <laughs> I had to rock <laughs> it out, man, and go all out. I try to do that <laughs> every year, you know? I love the holidays. For some reason, I'm one of those people that, thinking back on the holidays, the last quarter of the year, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, when I think back, those were the best childhood memories that I have. I kind of had a boring childhood. I didn't have a lot of friends. So my childhood kind of sucked for what it was, but man, the holidays were always fucking awesome. So I'm one of those people that I go all crazy, especially fucking Christmas. I saw your post about it oh, with man. all the pictures and all the different like <laughs> AI, like dream Christmas. Yep. Yep. stuff that you put up i was like damn there's some detailed christmas every everybody laughs at me because of it but i mean i i, I came up in one of those households <clears throat> where back in the 90s christmas was awesome uh, same here my whole neighborhood would just deck it out and christmas lights everywhere and and my whole family would get together and we me and my grandpa would go cut down a real tree every year and drag it in and put the real tree up and it was just really cool so i try to to bring that into my family so that my kids can have cool memories like that when they grow up you know i think it's good i mean you're right in the 90s it was where actually people it wasn't like we just celebrated christmas for a day it was multiple days christmas eve there was this there was that there mm -hmm. was counting down to christmas there was fucking non-stop christmas although today you're lucky, like you're lucky if you get trick or treaters for Halloween. Yeah. Well, plus there's not enough kids being born anymore, so. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then if they are, some of them are all brainwashed now and probably are masked out. <laughs> so why even wear a mask when they're already wearing a mask? <laughs> yeah, I know that's uh, that's what they're pushing for. I want you to wear a blue yeah. mask. That could be your Halloween. That'd be a great Halloween costume, being a COVID freak. <laughs> like I was thinking about it, like, cause I was, I was CLRing the shower this weekend, doing family shit. And Sophia was laughing cause I used like the, the hardcore CLR where you have to fucking wear gloves and shit. Cause that shit will fucking burn, burn your eyes. And then the fucking smell. So I pulled mm -hmm. out a fucking 3M mask, but I realized it's an N95 mask, but I usually use it for spray paint. Or shit like that yeah and so i surprised sophia I came in the room with the fucking gloves on i put on the mask and i fucking went in there and she was laughing so hard because she's <laughs> like people fucking go around like that i'm like i know yeah it's pretty sad that's it's, actually what i'm gonna be for fucking halloween COVID freak yeah yeah it's it's kind of scary to think back on i remember i a matter of fact i just looked back at one of my memories the other day where i posted on telegram that if everybody's wearing masks, why can't we smoke indoors? Should be able to smoke indoors. And then I said, what, you don't think a mask would protect you from secondhand smoke? Why not? Why don't you think that? You know, he's trying to get people thinking. Right. I was constantly trying to get people thinking, but it didn't work. Nobody, nobody wanted to think. No. Although, you know, that's what the Knight of Swords, this could be a double-edged sword to me of like thinking really to... Well, thinking in the moment and rushing to it, if there's an emergency situation, there's sometimes in life where it's like, oh shit, the fucking house is on fire. Oh shit, I got to do this. And then there's the thinking too quick, too fast of, oh my God, I'm wearing a mask in bed and we're not allowed to have sex anymore and we're going to masturbate looking at each other, which was actually told for people to do across <laughs> oh, every country and every state in America. Really? You've never seen the... no. I didn't see Bro, that. Like, they wanted, they, th in America, there were states saying to build a glory hole. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. You didn't see the sexual advice that was given to Americans? Mm -mm. Masturbate six feet apart, but look at each other. I couldn't stand fucking looking at it. I, 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 it just every time I looked at what was going on at the world, my blood would boil. And I was just so infuriated that I can't, I couldn't look at it. I just couldn't. So if I would have seen that, mm, that probably would have just pissed me. Cause you know that people were out there doing that. That's the crazy part about it. I could not believe it. You know, I guarantee you some people fucking did that shit. 
And that's that's why I just couldn't even stand to look at it. I did see a couple of weddings though, where I think there was this wedding where the two people were in like a fucking plastic bubble or something like that, and they 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 kissed each other through the plastic to get married. It was so. All you, all you have to do is type in COVID sex guidelines. So I pulled up nyc.gov, right? Safe for sex and COVID, right? Let me read you a couple of them. <laughs> All right. The virus can spread during sex and sex can involve close, heavy breathing <laughs> and contact with saliva. So the number one thing is to get poked. Crazy. Second. Now, this is the most craziest things. Tips for staying safe. Before you hook up, <laughs> talk about vaccination status <laughs> recent COVID-19 testing so imagine my dick's already flopped just even <laughs> going into this space let alone who went through these like protocols right like then ask so you have to ask, so did you get the vax did you get a test recently was it negative when was your last infection were you around anybody within the last 10 days? Exposure. Fifth, COVID-19 precautions. Because intimate, because being intimate with people who wear a face, uh, being intimate with people who wear a face mask and follow other COVID-19 precautions is a safer way to go. Here's play safer. Avoid sex parties and large gatherings. Limit your sexual partners. Enjoy sex virtually, such as sex dates, sexting, sexy Zoom parties. Oh my God. Avoid kissing. <laughs> Wear a face mask even during sex. I'm not making, I'm, this is on the no, government website. You. Look at that fucking, look at that. Wear a face mask even during sex. <laughs> okay. Over your nose and mouth adds a layer of protection. Make it kinky. Be creative with sexual positions and physical barriers that allow sexual contact while preventing close face-to-face -face contact. Masturbate together. Use distance and face masks to reduce the risk. Oh, my God. I would suffocate. <laughs> but that's the thing. You know people were fucking doing that shit. I, I, you know they were. Use dental dams. <laughs> and then it's like, to reduce contact with saliva, semen, or feces during oral or intersex or rimming. Oh, my Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know that's where this whole knight of swords things to me is it's a great card but it also is a card of just rushing in too quick yeah. especially relationships like think it's gonna be great oh my god i'm fucking going as fast as i can and then what happened you know now i'm a simp because she wants me to get a vaccination, take a fucking COVID test. When was my last infection? People don't even say this shit about HIV, but they would for COVID. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they, they were what they were trying to do at the beginning there was they was just warming us up. They were grooming us to separate from each other because, like I've said, their goal is to have no naturally born babies by the year 2030. That's their goal. Their goal is to have the population of the United States down to 95 million by 2025. That was their goal. Yeah. In Oregon, they put this up, a pause button on a peach. What? In the peach, it says, press pause. Rimming, mouth on anus might spread COVID-19. Virus and feces may enter your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Selective kissing. I mean, think of all these like things. Selective, like, you don't have a vac, so I can't kiss you. Get off. They literally say this. Get off. Get off while maintaining your distance. You are your safest sex partners, and they just show sex toys. No wonder everybody's all fucked up, though, because I feel like everybody, like, I feel like the pandemic, but then I even feel like what we're going through now with war and all this shit, just everybody's night of swordsing, like, 
now it's selective like what side of the war are you on i guess i can't people are not selling to palestinians or likewise people aren't selling to jews then you're getting it to where there's this weekend a bunch of jews are getting fucking death threats it's everybody's just rushing in to a media psyop in every way mm -hmm. I, I, and that's what's really crazy because the knight of swords to me it represents in very select positive positions because i feel like it comes after before the ten the ten of swords comes prior and it's like that's where we've covered that it's just like fucking i'm done grinding through these stupid fucking mental patterns to all these patterns and then it's like what so then it's just like free reign go wherever the fuck i want now and it, like sometimes that can come with some costs yeah <clears throat> you know well it, it's kind of like now that now that i think about it remember how we talked a couple of episodes ago about how like i like i always say i and i always said this even before i met my wife i don't want a woman who doesn't have experience because that's what happens you know you you sit in a box your whole life and and a woman who sat in a box and she had no experience she hasn't gone out and done anything all throughout her 20s no her best uh, partner was her toys right yeah yeah and then once she or not even toys like and once she hits her 30s once she hits her 30s she's like i think i've missed out on life i need to know what's out there and then she turns into a knight of swords mm. wants to get out there and see what's out there now i've always said you know I'm not going to settle down with anybody unless they've been around the block a few times. Unpopular opinion. I don't care because the more times you've been around the block, the more you already know what's out there. Yeah. So that at least even when, when, when we're at our lowest point or we're going through our roughest challenge, it's not like you're going to think, well, I'll bet you there's somebody better out there. You're going to be thinking, well, I already know what's out there. I've, I've experienced enough of that. So I'm just going to work this shit out here. Because, does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. I feel like once you get to these higher tiers of swords, it's the weirdest of all the tarot. It's like, he's the fastest card you see going against the wind. Even the birds above him are going the opposite direction. So he's going head first. He's got the sword fucking pointed. And then it goes to the what? The queen of swords where she's above the clouds, finally starting to get out of that. But she's not even looking at the card. She's looking away. And then you get to the king of swords. He's looking at you in a stationary. So mm -hmm. it's like the mind can go from chaos. And it, this is a very chaotic card. It's always chaotic times. Now it does well when it's like, shit, somebody needs to be saved. But I feel like this is a savior card too, where you feel like I'm going to go save a hoe. Yeah. I'm going to go save this person that I already know without even knowing it's unconscious knowing. I feel like it's just like, Oh, the patterns. This isn't, it's like people make up their own shit. Like this isn't the same pattern. This is a different, character and there's a little different situation oh, here yeah but is it the same pattern i don't know it definitely is a card to me where that rushing in energy without thinking except for using the mind in its primitive mm -hmm. function i mean this is this is just like pumping every part of that brain that wants to survival yeah the reptilian part of our brain Mm -hmm. that's that's funny too because I, I never really looked until you picked this card out for today i never really thought too deep about this card usually when it comes through for me in a reading for a client it's just communication like if you know somebody asks a question like what what's this person's feelings about me and and this comes out i'll say well they want to talk to you they have something they want to say to you or usually to me this is just a communication card yeah. and i know that it goes a little bit deeper than that but 99% of the time that it comes out in one of my readings, that's what I read it as, is communication or no communication. I never even really thought about, and like I said, I thought the Knight of Wands was the fastest. I didn't even pay attention to the fact that the Knight of Wands is just reared up about ready to go. So that gives me a whole new way of looking at this card. Yeah, well, I mean, I always looked at it as like, okay, somebody's coming in fucking fast. Is it worth it? You know, it reminds me of like a one night stand kind of energy where it's like, oh my God, it's fucking clicking. Woo. Uh, you want to change the camera or um, something's clicking. It's going good. Okay. We've just fucked. Now what? 
that's what I feel like sucks because you know there's that energy of in life of going towards something and it, it's like you everybody wants it as fast as it fucking can right and mm -hmm. then especially in relationships what happens like you got it oh yeah yep that's funny it always cracks and then me it's, up it's, it's the mental stuff right and then it becomes like the easy excuses like well I'm really busy right now or you know what COVID's out there why don't we just do a Zoom because I'm on another date and I'm not going to say that, but I'm just, let's do a quick little zoom. And then I'm on my next night of swords. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And it reminds me, I saw somebody share a meme the other day that said, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. And I was like, wait, what? I can't. Cause usually, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait. And it's like, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. That means, uh, you know, that, that vision that you have in your mind, it comes from the movies where we grew up seeing in the movies, the two people come together, they kiss, and then the credits roll, and it says happily ever after. And we just, from that point to the, to the end of their lives, we use our imagination to fill in the rest of the blank. So, so people still have that idea in their mind. It's like, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, why are we rushing? Hopefully, we got at least another good 30, 40 years together, ideally. Yeah. Take your fucking time. Slow down. Everybody's in such a rush, such a rush to come together with somebody and such a rush to get married and such a rush to like, what are you rushing? I, I, don't, I don't understand the whole mentality of people wanting to rush things. No, it, it, because this card is weird. The tower card, it's you sitting in the tower and watching the storm coming and knowing it's going to take you out but avoiding it at all costs where the knight of swords is the opposite it's the edge of this it's the edge of the fucking storm and it's going into the storm and it's knowingly going into the storms thinking i can save these people probably with some crazy idea like well the girl falling out of the tower i'll be able to save her hmm. right but she's got to go through the star right so it's like I, I i hate the creeper dudes I'm sure you've had it in your life whenever you dated somebody and they're just all waiting like fucking yeah. little fucking like, yeah. I can't wait until he's, she's single. Yeah. Yep. And then they get on this and like, whew. And they try to make you look bad. And going into a storm knowingly yeah. and thinking it's going to be all good. Mm -hmm. Like he can't save anybody in the tower moment. That's the irony of this whole thing because the people are going through the tower moment of their own destined faded moment mm -hmm. so in, in my mind this is where it's like i'm trying to force a change against the universe mm -hmm. and i think i'm strong enough in my mind to do that that's why i think it's that delicate balance of understanding with manifestation in your life where when you try to force the mind to puncture through the natural law and the natural frequencies and the in the wavelengths that are going like sometimes you know that creates static electricity if you think about it when you're just mm -hmm. going too too far against something yeah or the flow of life and you know it's like swimming up stream mm -hmm. when you do that with your mind it makes your mind even really more tired too yeah yeah well you see you see a lot of people do that and that's why it, one of the things that i teach uh with manifestation is failure there, first of all, failure is an illusion, but there are three kinds of failures. The first kind of failure that we all know and love is what I was for many, many years, and that's what I call the intellectual failure, and that's the person that has every excuse and in the book as to why it's a waste of time. You know, I was born into poverty. I'm not educated enough. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. A million excuses, so they don't even try, but... I'm not vags. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but the other kind of failure is the person who's very, very, very motivated. And this is what reminds me of the Knight of Wands. They get real motivated. You know, they want to do something. So, so they get on the path and they start taking action. And then the minute something goes wrong, they give up and quit. After mm -hmm. the first challenge they experience, oh, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. And then they quit. It's like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna give up and quit the first challenge that comes up, you ain't ready for it anyway. Yeah, and that has no honor in it. Yeah, because to me, it's the, the wands are about that honor, right? That mm -hmm. dedication, that commitment, that whatever it is, the the heart's driving me, the love's driving me. Mm -hmm. Where this is, I think, the mind, right? Where it's like, 
oh, what do you mean? I figured this out. I'm going to go fucking do this shit mm -hmm. and then change my mind if I want or yeah. whatever. But, you know, it's crazy because we do that. Somebody had said like fucking full throttle over a cliff. That's so this card. Yeah. Like, I don't care. And I feel like it's the des it's a desperation sometimes card too. I always look at this as some, when it's reversed, I'm like, somebody is desperate too afraid to leave and building up to the fucking biggest blow out ever. Like just like wanting to go, but not knowing how to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I know they fucking abuse me every day. Mm -hmm. I can't take it anymore, but I'm going to still figure out a way to keep, I'm going to fix it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to disrupt the family. Yeah. I don't want to disrupt this. <laughs> It's such a fucking, to me, this is a, the card of chaos. To me, I think it's the most chaotic card. Yeah. I, I, everybody thinks all these other ones like tower and shit. Like to me, I feel like there's so many things that come to those events, mm -hmm. but I feel like this is just where it's just like instant out of nowhere. Yeah. Bang. Well, it's not really out of nowhere though. That's the thing. It's true. Like I saw uh, just here very recently, you know, I step back and I, I watch a lot of people from a distance. And there's this one particular person that I know who's been in and out and in and out of a very toxic relationship for years and years and years and years, you know, on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off for years. And they got back together about maybe six months ago. And I've just been like, okay, okay, just watching the time. You know, just the other day, she posted a picture of herself with a black eye on Facebook. Oh, saying man. never again. That's weird that I was just channeling that energy. Yeah. That's what right away came up. Mm -hmm. I was just like, so I'm, I don't know why, but I, I know I got to leave, but I'm not going to. And I know I got to leave now, but I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to use all that energy to try and stay yeah. and figure it out. Oh, he just gets really drunk and blacks out and pukes and doesn't remember me and wakes up and, and hits me in the face. And it's because he's so drunk, he doesn't remember who I am. He thinks I'm his mom that he wants to beat up on. Yeah. Keep making excuses. Mm-hmm. So, so is she back with him now? Oh, I, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't Fuck think it. so. But I mean... It took a black guy, like, is that the eighth black guy? Yeah. How many black eyes in life? There, there's no telling how many how many 911s how many how many 911s it's kind of where i think people are thinking right now i mean there's it's it, nothing against the people either like i think that's what makes this one weird is in america it's easy to be like you know what look what the government's doing because this country represents all people all different kinds of people all different kinds of races religions all that but then if you apply that now, they found their little fucking thing to get onto people where it's like, I can't say that because then Jewish people will disrespect that. Or then, oh, but then look what's, they've like come up with like the perfect fucking scenario to make people not know how to handle it. But I, th I would have thought that this would be the easiest situation for people to step away from. Like... I mean, I when it came to the COVID thing, I even got sucked into that, even though like I, I was sucked into it because I was pissed off about it and annoyed by it. But this right here, like doesn't even grab my interest. I don't understand how anybody is getting sucked into that at all. It didn't make sense to me. I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Wow. I think, I think cause there's just been a lot of death. And I know, I know like three people now who have, family who died friends that died hmm. so they're all getting there's a lot of death happening plus if you just see the destruction it's been pretty crazy on all fronts or just the fact that babies are being kidnapped or babies are being blown up or like you know like so it, it it's getting at it's getting at what people didn't think that they would ever see it's weird they they've been using the term barbarism now you know like that's the term being used it's like i think people never thought that they could see a world with medieval like ways that humans can be but i mean they, they were doing that shit back in back in the day with what, what are they called isis 
I used right. to back in yeah. yeah back in 2014. I used to go to Google and type in ISIS footage, and I would sit and watch these like two hour long documentaries that ISIS would film and put on the internet with the horrific, heinous fucking shit they would do to each other, dude. It, it, it I couldn't believe it. It was like it scarred me watching some of that right. shit. So it was going on back then, you know. Yeah, but you know, I think a lot of people like to push things out and go towards my God, I'm going to go to the bar tonight on this Tinder date really fast. You know, so what happens in society when everybody's just, Oh my God, I got to go to Trader Joe's right now. Like, I feel like this night of swords has been being used in like, I got to go get that new television. I have to go get that new thing. I have to go get the new thing. That's going to trap me more. I have to go get the new thing. That's going to be more of a storm in my life. I got to go feel better. I need to go get this. This will make me feel better. And then when you do that for decades long enough, it's like, what do you mean? I've been in my little fucking fast, crazy, fucking really just focused on my own instant fast. This is like instant pleasure. Instant go towards it. Even if you know it's going to be a lot of pain, it's a fucking storm. Oh, mm -hmm. people have pleasure now in going into the storm. Mm-hmm. That's what they don't realize is like, why is my life going so crazy? You get on crazy intentionally. Yeah. And, you know, we live in a world where I don't think it's a coincidence the last couple months. You know, you see the actors go on strike. You see this AI thing come up. And then you realize people aren't really watching TV anymore. And they think, I've disconnected from it. No, you watch TV and watch death counts. Mm -hmm. as a fucking like as if it was the super bowl every day now you're just like waiting to see what's the next big blow up situation to have in a war and that's your stimulation people are like they don't realize it but they're stimulated to go find out what's next mm -hmm. in the story <clears throat> and in the atrocity and then they play oh my god this is such an atrocity we need to run and fickle fix this so it creates to where everybody feels like they have to go jump in and that manifests that energy for yeah. that force that wants that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're, they're addicted to that energy. We've talked about that before. Uh, after, what your body literally gets addicted to the chemicals produced by negative emotions. Mm -hmm. And it gets to the point where when you've been, when you've been exposed to that, since you were a little kid, when you grow up and you're an adult, you don't even realize that you're subconsciously looking for anything and everything you can find that'll trigger that emotion. And if you can't find anything, you'll go crazy and you'll make something up. You'll start a fucking problem just to trigger those negative emotions. And I, the other day, my cousin, actually, I saw where he had posted on Facebook, I wish that I could turn on the news and, and hear them say that there's peace on earth. And I commented and I said, all the news would have to do is tell you that there's peace on earth and it would manifest overnight. People don't understand how this works. Mm -hmm. They really still believe that the news just goes out and looks at the world and comes back and tells you what they see. No, no. They're telling you what to believe and you manifest it. Right. So if the news would, if every news station across the world would, would come on live and say, oh my God, peace in the Middle East, peace on earth. There's peace. All the wars are over, you know, dude, it would manifest maybe not overnight, but in less than a month, guarantee you peace on earth would work back. Peace on earth would manifest in less than a week. So that's I agree with you. But I feel like that's where I think as society, the Knight of Swords, to look at it, I think collectively is like, are we just going to storm into the storm? Like, that's what's so funny is we say we're going to storm in. Mm -hmm. And that's what this card represents. Like, I'm going to fucking storm in with everything I got. And there's always scenarios that get popped up and created of savior. Like, 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 like nobody talks about the hostage situation in this war. Like it's the first time in life where the hostages are like third place. You know, usually if there's a hostage situation with women and children and families, that's number one priority, no matter what. Mm -hmm. But now it's no retribution for what was done first to the people who died. The hostages are there, but we'll, you know, we have to deal with these things first. 
So it's like, do they really care about hostages anywhere right now? And what, like that, that's the really weird thing on both sides. Like, I don't think both sides, and I'm talking about the, the people that are in charge, the government, not the people of these places, just the fucking, let's call them the storm creators. Well, not the people. I think that's what's the problem is people are now starting to lump people in. If you're part, like, like, put it this way. We're Americans. Look what happened on 9-11 and then look what we did. Um, I could see how many people labeled Americans as piece of shits years later, right? But they also knew, well, we're not the people. The people, we're not the ones doing it. Mm-hmm. There's like, it's, it's, it's out of our control. Like, you know what I mean? It's, that's where it's like, like, how many people can just turn off anything? It, your phones are all embedded now with, you're going to hear about it through your social media. You're going to hear about it everywhere. The second your phone's on, there's going to be an alert through another app. You go into your Gmail, there'll be something about it. They send it even through weird ways, like emails, like the da 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 war. Like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. It just keeps coming no matter where you are at and it starts surrounding itself like a storm that surrounds around you. It's like, well, how do you break the storm? And then you add the Q thing. It's like, oh, the storm is coming. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, so they want, it's like everywhere you go. It's like, are we just going to keep feeding that? Or I don't know. If there's a storm, I usually go in my house and chill and, hang out with my family it'll probably take a couple of generations but where it's the the majority of the older people in this generation are probably going to all die off they're probably not going to make it through it's this is one of those types of things that i i don't believe it's impossible if they really were serious about it they could really start waking more people up than they have but i think the way they're wanting this to go is so that 20 or 30 years from now, the people who make it to that point will be all the way awakened. If that makes any sense. Like I, th I think they're just going to let natural selection run its course and all the people that get sucked into this shit, they're, they're going to take the lower timeline. They're the ones that are going to get sucked into a trap or the people who took the vaccine. If they flip a fucking switch and, and turn those people off, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I I had a a fan who's a a, a hemotibia like they deal with blood. I'm not gonna act like I know the full term. Sent me some peer reviewed papers that just really got me the whole COVID vax thing creates anemia. What is it? Anemia, like, and then creates they're trying to find the correlation scientifically, but it's making the vax need blood, right? And why they need to eat more food that has blood and mm -hmm. stuff like that, right? And that's where it gets to the beginnings of the idea of like a zombie. Zombie apocalypse, yeah. Yep. And when I saw that this weekend, and I'm not talking, this is just some like bullshit shit. It's oh, all peer-reviewed papers that just came out. Oh, yeah. That... And it's from every age or every male or female. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I took a minute instead of rushing Knight of Swords and, oh, my God, I just went, I'm going to sit on that one here. And oh, yeah, that's, that's been about that one. That's been known about and part of the plan for a while. That's one of the things that I learned about when I, you know, with some of the people that I connected with showed us some of the, the fine print on the insurance papers and disclaimers and in a lot, a lot of the insurance companies, if you read through their fine print and their disclaimers and whatnot, it'll say a zombie apocalypse. And it's been that way for years because, oh, yeah, that's, that's no bullshit. That's been part of the plan. That's been very well known for a while. So I believe you. But now it's just now starting to, to come out and be. Like, you know how there's like sickle cell anemia that people get. Um, but it's. It's it's like this mutation element. So like if people want to, I'll put in the chat right now the actual paper that was put out back in 2022. Uh, 
apolastic anemia. Um, and when you start really doing the fucking facts, it's fucking terrifying because I feel like, again, they created a storm and then very night of swords way. Let's make another storm to let people forget about the storm they're already in. We have to remember that we're still in the same storm. They just add another storm system on top of another. Like how many storm systems can really be put on top of each other is like the big question. Because I think that's why the Queen of Swords, she starts to see above the clouds where she can finally start to get some sort of insight. The Knight of Swords, though, has no idea. Like it looks like he's in a storm, but he's already in a storm in his mind. There's another storm system he might be in. But, you know, it's easy to try and be like, well, the next storm looks a lot feels better to get out of the one storm and move into another, but that's not the place to go. But they, that's the storm that's being forgot about, right? Is like, you know, like, are they asking everybody, you know, are they, okay, like take the care understanding of like COVID over the last three and a half years. Like, ha have you seen the US government or, or Israel ask like about the hostages. Are you sure they're all, are they being taken care of? Are you putting masks on them? <laughs> Can we put some of the aid and give you all shots? Because if it was such an important shot and it was worked so well that the aid should have been that. No. <laughs> Man, I just like to think about little things like that. I'm like, huh, if it's the most amazing thing to ever happen in humanity, and even the big awards this year were all given to the creators of this mRNA technology, wouldn't that be the thing that they would be pushing so hard for the hostages or for people in Gaza? Is like, well, we need aid and humanitarian aid. Give them all the new shot. It's the most important thing in the world for you to get. So are they still coming out with new shots? Yeah. Only 2% of the American population has taken it. Yeah, but what, like 72% already did, though? Like the old one? Yes. And mo well, in most other countries, it's around 90%. But yeah, Western countries. 2024 is probably going to be the big year that, that we see a lot of the people dropping. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I, I know that their, their plan to depopulate the planet was to have it down significantly by 2025. I know that much as a fact, as the plan, right? How successful is the plan? I don't know. I don't know, but I would imagine if that many people fucking took it, but again, and this, I don't know if I said this on an episode or not, but I remember back when the vaccine first rolled out. This is this this would happen to me from time to time. Somebody in Leah's family got the vaccine, and we were both worried. We're like, "Fuck, man, he's fucking done." You know, we we, we were scared. Now, I remember one night I was meditating. I was laying back, and I was in a meditative state, and I got this download that said, "He's fine. He got a saline shot," and that snapped me awake. And I was like, "What? A saline shot? What in the world?" And then it was about two weeks later that it started going around the truth community that the military came in and started switching as many of the shots as they could with saline shots. And I heard that like two weeks later. And I was like, dude, I heard that in a fucking meditation the other night. I got that download. So, so I mean, I have no proof. Well, there's new proof that there were certain batches that were full of it. And, and then it's proof if you look it up in Germany, because that's where Pfizer is. There was specific batches intentionally to not have any of it in there and be saline that were given to certain high up officials. Hmm. That's what's crazy though, is like they knowingly placed batch numbers mm -hmm. per state, per area, per hospital, per CVS based off knowing who they wanted to get those and the other ones to get those. And that's creepy. Yeah. If you were to think of a zombie map, think of it of like 
where are we going to put the zombie infection and where are we not to create the chaos? You would think put it out all over, but then it would just be like, no, nah, no, nah, you want it to be a build up to, to, to utilize control still. But I mean, even, even if, and I can't even, I can't even believe I'm <laughs> going this far out there, but even if there was like a for real ass fucking zombie apocalypse, I would imagine that, that it probably wouldn't be as serious as it is in the movies where they like you can't kill them i would imagine that even if there was a real life zombie a shot to the head would probably still kill them right because they're still humans right and your brain is what what makes your fucking body work so if you did see a, a zombie like trying to break in your house i could put a hollow point nine millimeter in its head and probably kill it right i mean i would assume we don't know yet what if what if the the nanoparticles reassemble? No. Oh. <laughs> and with AI nanoparticles that come in to save the day and reconstruct, like the T-1000 and Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It's Halloween. This is the Halloween edition, by the yeah. way, if y'all didn't know. <laughs> um, but, but I think that's where, oh, man. I, th I think that's, uh, uh, over the last three weeks watching everything, I'm like, people are forgetting about the storm we were in, and they think that storm's over without it being addressed, without it being fully figured out, right? Like, science community still doesn't have their full answers so all of us have to still take things as they come but it's like the amount of things in life have to come together before i think we make full you know leaps into things and i feel like these leaps into the next storm is it was intentional for this other storm that we were still in to find their connecting force and that's where people I think have to pay more attention to because now it's not health lockdowns, it's war lockdowns, military, you know, martial law. Yep. At some point, we're going to see military fucking vehicles on the streets at some point. I don't know when. I hear people, I hear a lot of people say that some shit's about to pop off this November. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that they're at least going to stretch most of that out for another year, but... I don't know. I, I am a firm believer, though, that we're going to see fucking military vehicles on the streets. But I'm not going to be tripping when that shit rolls out. Right. You know, because I, I still hold the firm belief that everything is, I mean, when, when you, when, it being under control doesn't mean that nothing bad's going to happen. And it doesn't mean that you get to kick your feet back and do fucking nothing. Right. But still, I believe that no matter what happens, it's being overseen by a, a better force. Right of the greater good that's allowing things to unfold the way that they will so that we can come out of this. And those of us who do awaken and, and, and do expand our consciousness and are making it into the new world, will be able to function in that world. Because if, yeah. if they were to just try to come out and I guess spit the truth out to everybody, all the people who are so brainwashed and so locked into the 3d world that they would probably, they would probably go crazy. They would die of swords. Yeah. They'd be going, but I think that's part of what the intention too, though, is right, is get the storms all together, make it crazy, then reveal some stuff and get those people to act crazy and then have them go out in the streets. And then that's the, like the number one thing is like, if people were to know the real truth, what, how would they react on, on both storms now? Now we're on two storm systems. So it's like, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. All you need is just that those last little cards to drop right now. The, the, the river card right now is we're just all like sitting with our hand. Like, I mean, I got some. It could be good. It could be bad. I don't know. And then that river card's starting to show up. Like, and everybody's placing their bets, and it's getting really narrow now. Like, where something something's gonna happen here. Well, the crazy part is now we're expecting it. See, if you look back to, to last October before election year, nobody was expecting it. 
And well, I mean, I knew that, that they were going to do something, but I didn't know how crazy it was going to be. But for the very most part, we were all blindsided by it. Now we're not. Now everybody is like, something's coming. It's going to get crazy. Everybody's talking about it. So I wonder how the public's really going to react. I wonder, I wonder if they would actually be able to, to blindside the majority of the population. I don't think so. I think that we're going to see a big rise up this time. A lot of people rising up. Yeah, and I think when you rise up, though, that you don't run like a knight of swords into <laughs> the storm here. Although there, there is a part of this card where, you know, sometimes in life, if the dark is doing what it's doing, you have to go against those dark storm winds and be the light that's going in. He is on a white horse, right? And that's if he was on a black horse, it would be kind of like a dark energy, right? Not referring to humans, of course. Just the understandings of dark and light. It is, though, very... What I'm seeing in these times is this card, like the winds are going against us and everybody's charging in the new storm the same way it was at the beginning of COVID with this war, right? Like, and that's all you see. It's just pumping and everybody's taking their sides and everybody's getting lost into that. And because to me, lost is the idea of like, oh, I know what this is and this is what I'm being told to do. If somebody told you to go go in that bathroom, stick your head in the toilet and breathe inside the fucking water for five minutes to cleanse. They would. They would. And that's no joke. They fucking would. Because I, I, that's why I opened with the sex thing. Like, yeah. wear a mask and, and masturbate six feet apart. <laughs> like, <laughs> getting off while... <laughs> Like, how do you know if the facial expression, do you have to be like, did you get off? As a guy, it's easy. Well, unless she's a squirter. I guess that's the way you know in life, is if it's squirting, it's true. <laughs> Halloween edition. But you know people fucking did that, though. <laughs> I know I did. You, <laughs> you know what? I, did, I was nice and didn't read the San Francisco one. Oh, is it worse? Oh, my God. That is the wildest fucking shit I've ever read in my life. The COVID <laughs> sexual guidelines of San Francisco. Is it, is it more geared towards uh, the gay community? Yes, but throwing every kind of kink in there and making sure that the windows <laughs> open to, you know, say, like, it's okay if position-wise, if you do something because long as your faces aren't facing each other like um <laughs> well now you probably got a bunch of people googling it people are probably googling it. that's where the glory holes started to come out oh shit like build a wall like it's like build go go build a wall in your house and like put a hole in it <laughs> and then the other side so like the idea of how they put the partitions at gas stations and at grocery stores like mm-hmm do that at your house with a hole in it. That's assuming your dick's big enough. <laughs> well, you have control. So like most of these dudes probably just took like a fucking eighth inch, just little fucking drill. <laughs> but, you know, a little hole saw. Oh, sorry, we don't make it in that size, sir. It's too small. I'll just take a drill. No. There's got to be, you guys have to have to have one. I'm sorry. And you can't use a battery operated fucking black and decker that you bought at Target. <laughs> but they that's that's where we're at if, I, I, like the, the the retardedness of that mixed with the retardedness of now is the double storm that is just mixing together and creating you know in horror movies or in like action movies or anything like that or sci-fi it's always like when two storms meet it gets really weird and that's what we're feeling right now and I think as light workers, this is a good card though of like being there for it, but also at the same time, I guess it's a very case by case scenario, Knight of Swords. Like when do you rush in? I don't know if there really is a moment where we have to rush, but I think there are moments when we have to respond. It's just hard to determine when those moments are. And I think they're very seldom. I think they're rare in between. I think I always look at the Knight of Swords as what's trying to come in so fast. 
instead of me going out so fast. I think the unconscious self is trying to go towards something fast. I think the conscious self is, why is this trying to come in so quick? Mm -hmm. Like I've always sometimes wondered in life, like, why is this person trying to come into my life so fast? I don't even know who they are. Why? Why is it like, huh? Why, why is it? It's like the scam emails. It's like, I've been looking for somebody with the last name Palmer yeah. because of my family. <laughs> and I wonder why are you 9 million, 100, you know, thousand, two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars and 13 cents in, um, <laughs> to this bank account. Please send me your bank account info. Yeah. <laughs> I just got one of those like, a few like, days ago. That, that, that to me is so like, what is this? And then, you know, there's people who click that shit. Mm -hmm. Or the fake ones where it's like, this is from Meta. And it will say like Meta. It'll say like something at, you know, like something Gmail, like Meta, Meta business. Yeah. One, two, four, six at Gmail. And it's like, please click here. Your, your Instagram is now able to be verified. Yeah. Oh my God, I already was verified like a long time ago like for being on TV and all that shit. Like, and then you just read the email, like, who's it from? And it's like, that's not it. Yeah. One they do on Facebook a lot that I see when I go look at the page is, is it'll say your post violates community standards and it'll have like the meta thing on it. And all it is, if you look at it, it's a post with like a hundred different pages tagged. And Jeez. yeah, you're supposed to click this link right here to file a dispute or something like that. And it's, it's just shitty the way that Could I, I need to ask you a question about a top story that's out today and it deals with AI. Um, and it blew, I didn't even realize that this was act. This is actually really happening. Hold on. Take me one second to find it. Uh, so long story short is men are cheating on their women with AI bots now. yeah and I've, i i saw the article and i guess they took a couple porn stars and they ai'd their voice right mm -hmm. and so it like is more of like a it's like 30 bucks a month supposedly <laughs> and you have an ai girlfriend who can act like she's a porn star like asking you how to do and then getting you off and talking so it's with her a, voice, whoever the porn star is, and like turning into AI. So it's like an AI bot on the screen? Yeah, it's more of like through text or voice notes, but it's AI doing it. Hmm. And it just makes me think of like people kind of like, oh, I'm going to get off and let me see what's going on here. It's not even a person. So people are like yeah. having a sexual... That's, I guess, like anime, the next level, like how there's anime porn, but it's not real. Yeah. Yep. Now you're in like, you actually are thinking it's more real when it's not real. So what does that do to the human brain now? What does that do to manifesting? What does that do to your, like, like, like we're in uncharted waters, whether it's genetic mutation in people to now spiritually genetic altered heart sexual driven natural processes for artificial humans that are human voices but are changed into yeah they're a computer that's because they're it's fucking wild i'm like dude it's fucking trippy their goal is not only to depopulate the planet but they want to get control of how humans are created and born. This is another reason why they're pushing the trans issue. It's because their goal is to make humans one non-gendered being that they can create in a laboratory. They want to be in control of how the future humans are created. This is the reason why when you're starting to hear these things come out now about aliens and the greys and whatnot, are actually, they're not beings from another planet. They're actually us from the future. And you notice that the gray aliens are usually they're, they're androgynous beings with no gender, no genitals. And they're saying that they're us from the future because they're trying to come back here and get us to switch that timeline. Because right now they're pushing all this shit. They're pushing, trying to push us away from each other, keep us from having sex with each other, 
brainwash humans into believing that they can be a different gender. So they get them to change their gender because they have this goal, this plan. And that is by 2030 to have no more naturally born babies. And then I think by 2050 right. to have humans just turned into this, this being that they can create in a laboratory with just to, to be slaves. Basically, I just want a, a slave race of lab rats that they can control for themselves. That's the goal. So right now what they're doing with all this AI bullshit is they're grooming us for that. Right. To, to get the men to, to, oh man, I don't, I don't need my wife. I just got this fucking AI bot that I can get off to. And then that's going to, you know, overload his brain with dopamine. It's going to completely turn his sex drive off. So he's not going to want to have sex in real life. You know, like how porno addicts, you know, how they right. get to a point where they can't even like fuck their girlfriend. And that's what they're trying to condition. They're, they're, they're very strategically conditioning us to stop reproducing. I, 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 it, it, it's a whole nother world to me, this idea, because it's taking it. I get evolution, but it's like we always evolve into the, to the human more, but this is an artificial human. So this is where evolution is reaching a new collapse, mm -hmm. completely off the mark. And that's where I'm like, it seems subtle at the moment, but it's not. It's like very abrasive. Well, this is what light workers are here for, yeah. is to bypass that timeline. I know. So that's why we're doing this work. That's how fucking serious it is. I know. It's not a goddamn joke. It's dead fucking serious that, that we awaken humanity because that's their plan. We have to bypass that timeline or else humanity as we know it is fucked. Planet Earth as we know it is fucked. So, yeah. Or I just looked at everything to know about the devil comment expected to pass by Earth in the summer. The enormous quote unquote devit comment will be passing by Earth for the first time in more than seven decades. They're just, everything they're labeling, everything they're doing is like, it also creates, I think, the divisiveness we're seeing. I don't know if you saw my stories, but I, I called out that Christian woman. Yeah. Who, yeah. And I, it, it, Instagram took the story off. Mm. Fucking, of course, she blocked me. She's sitting there calling anybody who does this work demonic and that we need to be purified and it's unpure. The zodiac signs are impure. If you connect with your zodiac sign, that you're embracing a demonic demon. Yeah, yeah. And it's spreading like wildfire. Now, to me, it's not so much. It's 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 another two edged sword. One, you get astronomers, not astrologers, calling out a comment as a devil comment. Like, what's the difference of this comment than another comment? Like, as far as like name wise goes. So then that gets everybody to start going. We need to get rid of the anybody who's doing demonic or devil, which is the occult. My serious thing under all of this, and the, if we're going to talk about the timeline, the light work shit is like the problem right now with religion, and I think the only problem with it, because I'll be cool, is the fucking fact that in it it just says anything dealing with the occult, which of course is just. The actual, of course, it's hidden and out of view, but it's more of that's the way that a planet will occult another planet by if we just saw a full moon lunar eclipse and went by Jupiter. Mm -hmm. It's occulting, right? That's how it's so it's like now we're in a world to where God, it feels so matrix where it's like there's agents everywhere now. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, oh, you don't follow COVID. Now you're not following the war and you're not religious. It's like, well, it really is coming down to a small group of people. Yeah. That's been my number one. I'm not, I'm not worried, but if I had to pick a worry, that's where my worry is, is because yeah. that, that feels like Agent Smith's coming everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you yeah, have genetically yeah. altered <laughs> Agent Smith's, and then you have, <laughs> you know, extreme religious, like going to believe that the occult's bad and not do the history, and then they're all coming at the same time. And that's what, that's what gets me at this moment, because it's like, 
and and they're all jerking off to fucking an AI chat bot. <laughs> we got to come up with more, more, more creative ways of combating it. You know, because yeah. we, we can't we can't just when it comes to the battle between the light and the dark, we can't just have two sides screaming at each other. It's not going to work. No, we got to come up with more creative ways of getting people to see the truth. Because you think of, of if a person is standing there and they hear the light and the dark just screaming at each other and they're lost, they don't know who to listen to. So how, as a light worker, do you put your message out there in a way that makes sense so they go, ah, okay, I think I'm going to listen to that guy. You know, So if they're saying that, that everything to do with an astrological sign is the devil or whatever, you know? Yeah, and that you're, it's unpure, and then the idea of purification, right, is always that God's going to purify by sending you to hell. That the idea of hell is purifying a soul. Well, people need to, then, then people need to understand what astrology actually is. That's the thing. Oh, I know. I mean, it's, it's the whole, like, the, the, the original Greek letters, the way we get our alphabet is all based off the zodiac signs. Like, so the language people speak literally is astrology, and they don't realize it to <laughs> the time, to... Every horizon, hour, day, month, year, all of it's all astrological. It's just sad, too, because uh, it's not about trying to prove and then going into, well, okay, this is where scripture says, right? Because people are so like they live by scripture. Yeah. But they have to remember who wrote the scriptures, which were astrologers. Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's like to me, I don't like to go and go, let me pick you out of scripture out of Matthew and a scripture out of every fucking part of the Bible because then that gets to where then they try and find a scripture that counteracts that. Right. Yeah. And it's a losing debate. No, we just, I, I think we need to, to help people understand what it is we're talking about when we're talking about astrology and the energetics of. You know, whenever the sun is in this place, then, then you know, the, the energetic, like basically, okay, so when the moon pulls the tides to shore, right. is that the devil pulling the tides to shore? Right. You know, like people need to understand what does this mean, like my moon sign? Like, well, where the moon was when you were born, that had an effect on you. Right. Just like if the moon's right here, it's going to pull the tides. Does that mean the devil is pulling the tides? Like uh, we, we need to figure out some new ways of breaking this shit down and explaining it. That's what I feel like my job is. Right. So that we can, because for the past, however many decades we've heard, you know, the same phrases, the same buzzwords and the, you know, and we need to start breaking it up and changing it a little bit and speaking, speaking in different terms because we need to expand our consciousness. Expanding your consciousness is just a nice way of saying understanding. That's all we're really talking about is understanding how this shit works. You Which know, maybe that's where this podcast is having to go now is like yeah. a way to reach something that people who follow our show now can show to somebody who's getting caught up in all this shit. That's my goal with this show. That's really where I think, cause I felt like when we were like, what card to do today? And then we got to like this card. Like, I feel like it's like, okay, something has to, sh we're at our transmutation moment of the show. Yeah. That's what I felt like. And if anything, I felt like with this card, it was kind of, it's also the positive is like, it's time to go and change things up. That's the positive of this card. Cause I feel like people sometimes, are, you know, like the example of that couple and she just got a black eye. Mm -hmm. Like that's where it's like, fucking go, get out, of, get out of that fucking place. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, it's like, it's so serious now of like, what are really good tools that others can send others to where it's not abrasive, it's not doing the same tactics that have been used over and over that don't work, and it's not trying to convince people, but have them naturally see it on their own, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's at that moment where it's like, well, what can we do? There's always something we can do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's another good positive part of the Knight of Swords. Well, there's always something we can do. We can always get in and we can go and do things. And it shows the unlimited capacity of even against the winds, you could still go do something and fucking mm -hmm. fight for the right energy in life. And that's where I feel like it's at. It's like, it's been a very weird week, two weeks of all this. Like that's, what's been stewing for me constantly is like, okay, it's got ultra serious now. There's no more, 
Let's just keep going in life with teaching the people who already understand. And we have to get a message for those to spread to others that can help out. Because I think all of us, whether it's you or me or anybody who's watching this, we've all tried. Mm -hmm. And it's not about convincing. And there is no doctrine because then that's copying the religions it's it's a it's a it's a hard one though mm -hmm. but i mean that's the light work though that's been my goal with this show from the day we started it yeah that's, i mean from from the the day that we moved here to southern california before me and you even knew what we were going to do that was what was on my mind i want to figure out a way to get spirituality and get its tentacles into to every other area, facet, and aspect of life. Not to convince anybody, not to say that their beliefs are wrong, but like if you're a Christian, just to gain a better understanding of Christianity. Right. If you're a Buddhist, to gain a better understanding of Buddhism. Right. You know, the same with Islam. Because that's all true spirituality really is, is it's a greater understanding of all these things, all these little boxes that people live in, they're crammed in this little bitty box of beliefs. And it's not to say necessarily that the, that box of beliefs is wrong. It's just that there's a right. something bigger going on there. And that's that's my goal with this show is to at least, you know, trigger the first domino that'll that'll help that start happening, you know? Yeah, because I, I mean, when you say little boxes, it's like the the intentions of religions in their formations of them had so many amazing things that are ironically from all of them are integrated into spirituality. So it's really interesting seeing how they've become boxed where they take those parts of it out and kind of create it into a McDonald's. Yeah. You know, and, and what scripture do you like? I like the number one combo, big Mac <laughs> versus big, 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 super size me, mm -hmm. you know, I, and it's like, people don't realize like that's kind of what it is. Like, I'll never forget when they asked Trump when he was running for president in 2016, like, uh, so, so you're a Bible man, right? And he's like, yeah. And then I, what's your, fa what's your favorite verse in the Bible? He's like, ah, you know, I, I like the whole thing. And then they're like, uh, what do you mean? So like you new Testament, old Testament guys, like, yeah, both, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, like it kind of is like, he's very good. At, he was very good about not getting caught up in all that because yeah. he knew like, Oh my God, the judgments that'll come. And like, look at somebody like Mike Pence. He just dropped out of the race. Yeah. Because when you're standing up there and just screaming at the top of your lungs, the gospel. Is that what he was doing? Oh yeah. Oh. He, same lines all the time, but always. When I put my hand on that King James Bible and took the inauguration, you know, I put the good Lord before everything in my life. And it's just like, oh, so, okay, like, what about the job of the people to without clouding it by your spiritual bias? Cause if you're basing your whole, that's just the problem right now happening in politics is everything's going religious, right? So it's like, you're not going to really be for the collective if it's only from your religious view. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's not part of that religious view means that their laws, the way they live, the way money's allocated, the way, you know, you know, down the list of every part of somebody's life is affected by the religious situation. Well, what if, what if we could get somebody in the spiritual community? I guarantee you of, of the hundreds of thousands of followers that me and you have together, and, you know, I guarantee you we could get somebody out there who's spiritual who could go run for office and do something, you know? Right, yeah. Like, what do you what do you think? I don't know. They probably because as soon as somebody comes and runs for office, they get ambushed, don't they? Yeah, and you have to be a very good speaker, and you have to be willing to understand how the actual whole entire fabric of a of a of a constitution, but it's more importantly the understanding of the federalist mentality of a centralized republic work in every part of it. Most people don't know how it works. Well, it's complicated. You know? I mean, it's kind of, com I don't know. I grew up on it my whole life, so. Yeah, you know, it, 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 there's a lot of history you have to know, too. That's why, what is the number one job 
that comes into politics. Do you know what it is? Lawyer. That's politics? Yeah. If you, if you see, it's like the number one job of whether it's a congressman, a senator, presidents, oh, before they became in politics. They were lawyers they were before? Lawyers oh, before. okay. I could see that. So it's like what you see, and they drop that until it comes to a moment where it's like, oh, my law degree taught me that, you know, like they're all lawyers. So they know the laws. So if you're a lawyer, most of them to be in politics, if they're on the right, especially they go into federalist societies or they go into areas where they understand federalism and understand the federalist debates that happen to create the constitution. Cause after we won the war, it was articles of confederation for fucking almost a decade, right? This place wasn't a constitutional republic. It was Articles of Confederation. There was no centralized army. It was the states that had their own militias. It was like there was there was there was very very there was there was not even a president. You know that that was not even an elected president. That was a chosen president in Washington when the Constitutional Convention happened, and afterwards, then at the first Congress in New York City. So it's like you know, like people don't realize. You have to know the matrix inside out and the spiritual, like, and that's, that's another problem I feel in the spiritual community is like people will run into the spiritual. I say this about astrology, right? It's like, I didn't learn astrology first. I learned astronomy first. Then I came to astro astrology and was like, oh, well, that makes sense. I can understand the rotations in my head. I can understand all the, the, the astronomical aspects to it. What are, the, what are the chemicals that, and what are the, what are the properties of this planet and that planet? What's the distance between them? Like, what's the order? What's the rotations? What's the ecliptic? What's all these, what's all these things, right? So that's where people in astrology get lost. Like, I don't understand the, how it works. Yeah. You know? So it's like if you're going to go into government, it's like, well, if you don't know how the government works and you just want to change it, good luck, because you're going to have to be really good at convincing people in your own party and reaching across the aisle and know how to fucking whip votes if you're in Congress or in the Senate. I believe that person's out there. They got to be out there somewhere. Yeah. Just whether or not they would actually step forward and do something. Because, I mean, one of the things that I've learned in my line of work, you've probably learned this too, is people watch me, at least my content, that I never would have expected. I, there's that I've had people come to me for readings that I never would have expected. Right. You know, usually you think that that people who watch us are mainly yeah. just like older middle aged ladies is what I always assumed. Oh no, oh I've seen I've had clients come to me that are from all walks of life, from, yep. from like lawyers to fucking actors and actresses and news anchors and shit come to me for readings. I mean, porn stars, fucking you name it from anywhere and right. everywhere. So, so I believe that that person's out there somewhere. I believe yeah, so. Yeah, I think they are too. I just think ugh, in this world to go into a election, not only does it cost a lot of money and you have to pay for every primary, but then there's election laws. So you have to do it totally on the right because the, they'll get you in one millisecond and then you go to jail if you do yeah. it wrong but i believe there is somebody out there but again that's one of the hard uh it's, uh, we're at we're at that juncture point now like there's no more it's this this is a no going backwards and really fucking paying attention of every move now that's happening forward. You know? And I don't think we want to as a collective feel like, well, I guess at the end of the day, we're going to have to feel like this in order for it to fucking... Usually when you come from a, I need to save something, it's pretty desperate. You know? And... Well, that's the times we're in, I think. It is the times we're in. I mean, that if you think of the founding fathers like that, they felt the same way, and that's what they did. So I don't think it's one person. I think it's many. 
like the idea that one person's going to save the world is what religions think. So this right. is the idea yeah. that Jesus is coming back to do this. <laughs> one person's just going to. That's what they want you to believe so that you'll sit back and do nothing. That's yeah, because at the same time, when you're having a hemorrhoid and you're bleeding, he's going to be underneath your butt, <laughs> wiping the blood. While there's a, oh my God, I got to go over here. There's something else happening at the same time. That's that's the when you when you separate God into a human form as a person only. And that was the debate creating Christianity. And the dissenters who were like, well, that's not possible. You can't take a human and make him a god because he was never known as a god or a way to God as far as like a god that's a way to a god. It, it, it's, it was manufactured. So <clears throat> there was this group when I used to DJ called Manufactured Superstars. They were big for like a minute, not even. But I always thought of that name as very interesting because I feel like that's what we see religiously and we see how they did with Fauci, how they do with the war now, they manufacture a superstar that's from not from the light, that's from the dark, really easy. <clears throat> and then that was the weird thing with Matthew Perry passing on how I think I saw 15 different versions of what's going on on Twitter just in the last day. Really? Oh, yeah, like everything from like, he was already trialed and dead. He was tried and executed for being a pedo to, oh, you know, he wasn't even real. He was right? like, I, I, was, <laughs> I was just like, okay, like, let's just let's calm down a second here. Like, fucking guy, fucking, I know people who fucking used to hang out with him. So it's like, and he was, he was alone. He was battled a fucking mad, mad addiction. He died very alone in his life. He didn't have any kids. He never was married. He was engaged. It didn't work out once. He lived alone. He made a lot of money and he, and he went and experienced his life. Got all that pleasure and dealt with a lot of pain. You know, but the, the whole idea, like this guy was, uh, you know, and then I, I understand how some people could believe like, oh, this is white hat and he's, he's, he was a pedo and they gave him an option. So he put out a good book about addiction and then you're executed now. And I just feel like it's like, that's not light work to go execute dark people. That's what I think is the hard part for me to take on is like, no, like I feel like light workers were here to watch people. We all fuck up and, 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 and not, we're not the ones to judge. I like the one that I saw where they they showed the the post of him advertising these shirts that said yeah, I, I couldn't know. be vaccinated enough I know. or something like that. You know, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it, and it's funny because when I put that video up, I put that video up on my Instagram saying, "Why is nobody talking about everybody? Every time a celebrity drops dead, nobody's talking about it." Well, now they're talking about it. <laughs> I know they actually, a bunch of people changed his, his Wikipedia for like an hour before they caught on to it that said on his death that it's being looked into about his COVID-19 vaccination. Oh. <laughs> and so this has really triggered the fucking mainstream bad. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty fucking smart though. You yeah. have to admit, some, some motherfuckers <laughs> went in there and changed the Wikipedia to where it said that for an hour, and then Wikipedia took it down. Hmm. But I was thinking, you know what my guide said right when I saw that shirt is like Jennifer Aniston, who on that show, friends, that was the chick everybody wanted. If you were a viewer and you were young and 13 going through puberty, trust me, Jennifer Aniston was hot, right? And then on the show, they all wanted her. So it's like, I feel like with him, because she was so COVID Nazi, she came out, I don't know if you remember in 2021, like, I won't even be around anybody who's not vaccinated. Nobody can be on my team. I won't work on a set. I won't do, right? So she was like Nazi. I feel like he was still trying to impress her. They probably had a little thing and he went so, he was so simp that he made a shirt. 
that said that. You think that's what it was? Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. Right? How simp is that? Like if a chick's into something, right? I'm going to make a shirt that says I am doing that of that cause. Let's say a, a chick is into saving um, snails from being crunched by kids who walk to school. And it's like, you're out there taking pictures with shirts on, like save the snails and you're holding them and you're laying in the grass and protecting them from a bunch of school kids with backpacks <laughs> who are wearing masks to try and win the girl over. Yeah. Cause he was so lonely. Lonely. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, like he didn't have a relation. Like he didn't have <clears throat> good relationships. He didn't have family. He, you know, I mean, he got to the place to where his happy place was in his jacuzzi and then that Batman thing. Yeah, and it was, and he was talking about his mental health, and so he was like, "I'm gonna have fun and call it Matt Man." Mm -hmm. And it was it was funny because it was the picture was from five days prior, but it was the full the moon beginning to be full, which was a lunar eclipse. So if he really already had died, why would the lunar eclipse be exactly on his Saturn and opposing his moon where the sun was? Like he died when he died as an astrologer. It wasn't like he was executed. And so so what did he do for the last five years since he was executed? He just like it just people are <laughs> well it's got people talking now at least they're talking you know but i don't know man and we're gonna see a lot more of it too people dropping yeah. dead from the vaccine you know you don't know you don't know what it is that's the thing like going into this i think it's a waste of time to try to figure out what's going on with anything it's so again that's it goes back to what we were talking about an episode or two ago where at a certain point you have to monitor your vibration because there's so many distractions being put out. You don't know what's real. You don't know what's fake. There's people that you think are alive who are dead. There's people that you think are dead who are alive. Whenever they're doing something over here, they're, they're doing something over here, trying to distract you. And it, after a certain point, you, you can drive yourself nuts trying to follow it all. You know? And Well, I mean, I look at it from a much more spiritual place. I, feel, I, felt, I felt like sad when he died, not because only or not only because i thought he was hilarious in some of the movies that he did to me it was the movies not the show but it was like that he was lonely but i thought oh when when he was in the whole nine and a half yards movie he was with bruce willis and then you see bruce willis going through the same thing mm -hmm. and bruce willis right now is pretty much not there anymore in the yeah. mind right like it's sad yeah. so I was thinking though, I'm like, well, look what happened to Bruce Willis in his love life. Like he was with Demi Moore forever. And then she went with Ashton Kutcher and then Ashton was with her. And then he couldn't even, he was, he was having difficulties with that 20 years ago. And then of course, then Ashton fucked over Demi Moore. Right. And then fucking, he moved on to Mila Kunis. Now you see Ashton Kutcher, like he almost died in the last year and a half for a year and a half. He, being paralyzed you know and oh i didn't know that yeah right and so he just quit his firm which is all about child fucking yeah protection from all that shit and you don't see him right the number one twitter the number one celebrity of 2000 like named in the beginnings and so there's like these weird little like patterns of these people who are just very unhappy mm -hmm. in the relationships that they choose and and feeling very empty Cause then like Demi Moore is so weird. She's like, Oh, well he's the father of my kids to Bruce Willis. So she acts like his number one fan and promoting all of how his health status is as he's dying. Yeah. Well, where were you when he was doing good? You were fucking Ashton Kutcher. You weren't promoting him then. So I, I look at it like, more human than getting lost in the crazy you know because i look and i'm like they're all being affected by if you were to get the idea of the 90s and 2000s fame 
without phones where you had to watch on TV or you had to see in a magazine, you become ultra famous and then you get all this money. And that's what everybody in Hollywood wants now. When they do one movie, they think I should be making $10 million a movie. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, realize these people had to do a, a lot of different things and TV shows and all that shit. And the TV shows have to do good in order to fucking make a lot of money and the, and it, but back then when they got it, it's like, yeah, they go out and then they, they just think, I got everything I want in the world. I can, I can just run around and just I get out of that storm. I got enough to just get through the next one. Not then, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a whole nother fucking, that's an interesting. <laughs> yeah. He's an interesting one. Yeah. But that's, that. that it's sad because I feel like, you know, I don't know. I think what we're seeing is like that. People are like, Hollywood's over. I'm like, no, it's just changing. It used to be Westerns. It used to be people like Charlie Chaplin. It used to be John Wayne. And then it went to the 70s. And then it went to this. And then it went to... It changes all the time. So you're just seeing the old Hollywood is what we know as old. It's always the old Hollywood. <clears throat> the old Hollywood is always changing out. There's always entertainment, whether it's plays, whether it's orchestras, whether it's, you know, there's always entertainment. Entertainment ever going away. The idea of like Hollywood's gone forever. It's like, that's what they said five times over. And it's always when, oh, there's no more Westerns. You know? Oh, there's no more Spartacus in those kind of movies. Oh, they're going to use Technicolor now. They're not going to do black and white. Oh, you know what I mean? Like they're going to use pan panorama vision, you know, now. It's like, the, it's like people don't realize the, the evolution of things, but it does feel like in every place, whether it's banking, whether it's entertainment, which would be considered Hollywood as part of it, or YouTube, it feels dead. Or TikTok and all those. I don't go on that, but you know, or Instagram or any, they all feel dead. Everything feels like it's over. It's everything's had its time. And I think that's what we're feeling is like everything's had its time. Mm -hmm. And and what's that new thing? We all have a part in that. And right now there's forces out there trying to guide everybody towards it, which definitely looks to me it's not CNN anymore. That's, you know, this religion's TV. Now at Fox News is this version of religions TV. Now this news, Al Jazeera is that religions TV. Right? Like all the news networks, you don't look at them as political anymore. It's religious. Hmm. So that's the new box. Well, that's why we got to awaken people to get people to understand more about their religion. That's why I like Billy Carson, dude. Yeah. Billy Carson goes through and he takes the Bible. I seriously believe that man is one of the most valuable assets to the spiritual community because he's done research about human history that nobody's talking about. When he goes to the places too, it's not like he just yeah. does it talking about it. He goes. Yeah. That's what he's been doing all year. He's been fucking all over. He's been doing his forbidden knowledge tour, taking everybody to Egypt to show everybody all the Egypt shit. Mm -hmm. And he'll open up the Bible and he'll he'll read parts of the Bible that no fucking pastor stands up in church and reads, and you know, I know. yeah, about about slavery and how they. How, I remember that mm -hmm. the one where he was where he was saying, and I and I, I don't remember it verbatim, but it was the how you're supposed to obey your slave master, and something to the effect of if you get caught uh, uh, raping a slave, uh, you you something like you can purchase her for 50 coins or something like that. I don't know. It was, it was really, really weird and really bizarre. And like, you're like, what does it say that in the Bible? It sure does. And he'll tell you, go look it up, go look it up and read it for yourself. You know? Yeah. Cause the one that you get in your hotel has been altered to the nine, the same way that the packaging on a COVID-19 vaccine has been. Mm -hmm. You have to look at it the same way that when people open up that blank sheet of paper, that comes in the vaccine pamphlet. The same way they open a Bible up now. Yeah. The blank. Hmm. Because what's really in it isn't there and been redacted out. And and even just the idea of like the King James Bible, which was a king deciding to make his own Bible and all the fucking intense fucking secret society shit built in that Bible of how it was put out. Do you remember the Bible was Latin? 
So if you, if you were young or old, it doesn't matter. You didn't read. So all these priests told you from a book you couldn't read and their version of it. So the stories over time just keep getting more and more different. Mm -hmm. And then people are able to then read it and make their first interpretations of it. And then that's where you now come today and you have crazy people on YouTube who are interpreting it as this and that the astrologer should die be purified yeah and that fucking youtube algorithm is shoving it in everybody's Everyone's face. face i'm really good at programming all my algorithms like on facebook and instagram super easy to program your algorithm so you only see right. what you want to see youtube i cannot get them to quit trying to shove christianity down my throat i cannot do it no matter how many times i click do not recommend this channel do not recommend this channel no matter every other post is about Jesus coming back and shit. And it's like, what the fuck, man? I think it's, it's like they're doing it intentionally. It almost feels like the YouTube algorithm is programmed very specifically. Like you can't program your own algorithm like Facebook and Instagram, you know? I know. So I think YouTube might be one of the very first platforms that they use possibly. Of course, when it comes to TikTok, I don't even know because I don't scroll TikTok. But I would imagine it's probably about the same way as Facebook and, and Instagram, where whatever you interact with, that's the kind of content you're, you see. And YouTube's not like that. It just shows you whatever it wants to show you. It's fucking weird, man. It's bizarre. Yeah, and that's... Uh, it feels like everything's at the same Matthew Perry point. <laughs> and so that's what... I don't think it's about being scared of that, but understanding that this Halloween is bringing in a new character of a Halloween costume we've never seen before. When you get the UAP shit mixed with this, mixed with these storms, they're ready to bring out the quote unquote idea of a savior. That is not a savior. And then that goes with the whole idea in Christianity and the end times and the Antichrist. And, and then everybody just starts to fall and to do the opposite and then find this is the savior against the Antichrist. And that must be Jesus reborn. And then is that the mm -hmm. Antichrist or not? Or, and then think of all the fucking. To me, that's chaos at its highest that's approaching. You know, we just got to keep shining that damn light then. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to kind of finish up this card. Yeah. It's kind of a tough one. I think it's a, it's, it's a, it's a card that is, is to used, be used very sparingly and to be very more of a conscious understanding. Like, am I rushing or what's rushing in? And to take a pause, like, am I really about to masturbate with a mask on <laughs> six feet away from the person? <laughs> why are they trying to rush that in so quick? Like, why is this person coming into my life so fast? Why is this situation trying to come in? Like, I've always had a lot of suspicion. Whenever I get, like, an email, like, I have some inside info, and I only want to tell you, and da -da -da -da, yeah. I don't respond. I don't either. That shit scares me. Scares like a setup. That's like that's always like FBI or something like that, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it, the best way that I could think with this card, if you could take the Knight of Pentacles and take his pentacle away and give him a sword, you know, so that you're you're thinking you're still moving slowly and methodically if we could get the knight of swords to slow down like the knight of pentacles and just kind of look and check things out and think things through without just running in and acting like an idiot without just jumping the gun without like whenever the news puts something on tv just latching on to it and picking a side and you know vaxxed and unvaxxed or trans or gay rights or you know whatever Israel, Palestine, to just step back and just look. What the fuck is going on here? Why are they trying to get us to fight with each other? I'm not fighting with nobody. Right. 
I don't care if, if you don't believe what I believe. That's cool. Okay, well, I'm not fighting with nobody. That's the, at the end of the day, that's what we got to get people to do is stop fucking fighting with each other. And that, that you would think it sounds so simple. It sounds so easy, but I don't think it's going to be that easy. No. This is not an easy moment or an easy time. You know, for all we know, bugs are what control the world and uh, insects are aliens. So, was Jesus a bug? <laughs> Well, they, they, and that's a serious question. Like, they've, you know, been, like, they've been dropping plane loads of bugs over L.A. Everywhere yeah. around all America. But when you look at the way that we try to mimic bugs, the only other species on the planet besides human beings that act like humans are bugs. They go to war, steal from the other side. They poison others. They do all this crazy shit. They fucking go to war for the queen. They fucking, when we go into a jet, the way that a our sunglasses look at all like bugs. It all is like bugs. The way a plane looks is like a bug. Like it all like the it's not there. Those aren't angel wings on fucking Egyptian. Those are fucking bug wings, hmm. right? From praying mantis to well, yeah, you yeah. know, like people don't realize like was Jesus a bug? Well, yeah, there is. I mean, it, I think it's kind of known. That like if, if I told if I told that to people, and I'm not saying it's true, but I'm just saying like, let's say the evidence came out that Jesus was a bug, not a human. How would people react? I mean, well, I think would they praise bugs. I think there are some people that could take that and find evidence because it is known that there is a race of mantis beings out there. And if you think about it, if you really, really think about it, think about the movie Men in Black. You know, there's, right. there's, I, I, we've heard a lot of testimony of how that's actually a documentary. It wasn't right. a science fiction movie. And that whole thing was about a race of bugs. Right. So I don't think that's a far-fetched idea at all. No, I don't either. And, that's what I think people have to start when they think, oh, Jesus was a good guy. Do you know he was a person? Like, do we know for sure? Do we know any of that? Do we know that the, the, the time and all that, you know, using astrology when you go back, because our time systems are all off, it's not going to be the same. That's why it's BCE. That's why it's like all these BC, like all these things. People just are, you know, we think it's 2023. It's like, maybe. Like, we, like, we have to we look at the whole table. The, the table got overloaded and looked like a meth lab. <laughs> and we got to fucking clean all the fucking meth supplies off the table probably clear out the whole fucking trailer that it's in and re look around outside and reconfigure our all our whole collective ideas about things because it's gotten to where nothing makes sense anymore and nothing's evolving into itself normal i don't think it ever made sense i think we're just now starting to realize that it never made sense yeah it, it kind of made sense back when we were all programmed to think in these little bitty boxes but the more we're awakening now we're just now starting to realize that none of it fucking makes sense. Yeah, you know, somebody brought up the movie Riddick. What's that? Did you ever see the movie Riddick? With, with, oh, those are great movies. Mm -mm. That's some, I've heard of it. Yeah, it's some crazy ass shit. The bugs that are fucking on the planets at night that come out. Hmm. Fucking gnarly. Or even um, Starship Troopers. It was about the bugs. And it's all that you're seeing right now starting to play out. And the director of that movie actually was serious. He made it kind of like a comedy, but he was serious trying to wake up people. And then it became the global, you know, join, join the army in the global hunt and go kill the bugs. And now they have to go to Mars and kill all these bugs and, and the alien planet and all this shit. And it's like, it took, it takes out Rio de Janeiro. That's like the new place all these weird things it's fucking we, we all have to like re 
think at all. So like whenever I see somebody with ISIS or like, think of that ISIS, people think of that as terrorists, but that's ISIS goddess. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, was she that way? So people think, Oh, are they trying to change that name or are they actually acting as she was with her huge insect wings? And as she, you talked about what you do with slaves, what was ISIS doing with slaves? Mm hmm. And then the feminine look up to that to be like a, you know, a black widow spider. It's the female black widow that mm -hmm. kills the male after it's mated. Mm -hmm. like the way that we see all these things in nature is pretty gnarly. Like a, like a spider will be used to weave a web and then it can be poisoned to be taken over by another insect to weave the web to wrap its own self in to be used as food to... It's fucking dark shit mm -hmm. out there. And it's in our insect world. Yeah. Why is it the only thing I don't feel bad killing my whole life is an insect? When I see a fucking spider and shit, I am fucking killing that motherfucker so it's dead. I want to know it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, I, you know, lizard, whatever. I'm like, whatever. Like, get out of here. You know, but when it's an insect, I don't give a flying fuck. That's so funny that you say that because over the past summer, my backyard was in bested with those orb spiders me and leah would go out every night after dark and those webs would be up everywhere we probably killed anywhere between 150 to 200 of them over the summer and she started feeling kind of bad she's like oh my god should we is it, is it right for us to be doing this and i'm like uh we're infested yeah if it's just one little spider up in the corner all right fuck you whatever but, dude, our backyard was infested with those big brown orb spiders every fucking where. And we, we never killed them all. It didn't matter how many times we went out there and I'd spray them, kill them. They'd, there'd be five more of them up the next night. It was just fucking nuts. And I didn't feel guilty for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel guilty at all. I had a couple of those just this last week. And I was just like, oh, you're in these trees. Uh-huh. They were, they're not around the, the trash cans anymore. <laughs> but I like pull them down and fucking make sure they're smashed. Dude, we, we got one of those. Uh, I smash them. We got one of those tennis racket bug zappers. You ever see it? Those are badass. It's a bug zapper tennis racket. And I would get up there and <laughs> get up in the web <laughs> and you get the bug in it and it goes pop, pop, yeah. pop. And then it's funny because you can push the button. And the spider, every time you push the button, its legs go like that. And then you push the button and it goes like that. And then it'll start smoking and shit and popping. <laughs> it's gnarly. I had fun with it. It's like a salt gun, too, for, for flies and shit. Like, yeah. I mean, you got to think. It's like they try, and, they try and use us as like bugs. Like we're causing the climate change. We're, we're, we're causing the earth. Like when a fly gets on your skin, your food, it's laying eggs the second it touches it. Mm -hmm. that's the way a bug works right you're infested with bugs earth humans are infesting the planet it's like has a bug consciousness taken over human consciousness sometimes I wonder and they all like if you just anybody out there type in macro photography of insects and the like crazy stuff over the last three years, macro photographers have been doing to be to see what they really look like. Mm -hmm. Those are the aliens. Like it's pretty fucking clear. Like, oh, where are they up there? Like, well, you know, it's it's awful funny. See, here's another thing we've been dealing with: mosquitoes. Right. Now, Leah was born and raised in Southern California, and this summer, even up to now, she's been getting ate up by mosquitoes like she never has right. her whole life, and she keeps saying, "I'll see it." And then it'll disappear. She's trying to swat it with the fucking tennis right. racket thing. She's like, I'm watching it. And then I go to swat it and it disappears. And first I started kind of joking like, oh, they're interdimensional mosquitoes. <laughs> and then the more we started seeing it, the more I'm starting to think, well, they, they dumped billions of mosquitoes over L.A., and, All and, over the country. Yeah, it, we, we saw the crazy. We saw the video footage of them doing it with the plane. And they're genetically engineered to supposedly be injected with a counter to the Zika virus. 
Oh, right? really? Yeah. So like that they will go spread. I'm not even kidding. Go spread a genetic engineered shift to not allow the mosquitoes to carry a certain virus. But what does that mean? They're going to carry a different virus, an evolved virus to evolve out of that because you're messing with nature. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if them little fuckers would slide in and out of dimensions. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Either. I mean, the way that their webs just pop out of nowhere and you can't see them, mm -hmm. that's what they do. But I would say that also, if we think that bug thing, it's like, in these times, in these moments, what do bugs do? Why are bugs the only ones that like, when they, they will bite you or they will sting you with a poison mm -hmm. to humans. It's fucking trippy that humans went and reactivated that with the shots. So as you think of mosquitoes, the mosquitoes already were every CVS worker. I, I couldn't live being a CVS worker, a nurse, a Walgreens person that would inject people with a worse poison than a wasp carries. That means you've been taken over by the hive mind. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, when people are like, Jesus is great, it's like you're, you're, you're being forced to go look up to something that, do you know that's a human or was that a big mantis or was that a, we have no, it's all hearsay. And the scrolls they find in, from the beginning are so, eh, it's questionable to even say it's that let alone try and keep your seventh grade fucking note from a chick you liked in a, in a, in a box safe from being destroyed. <laughs> so, I, and it, it's, it's creepy because the hive mind and, and people going out to go do what insects do. Like, because in, in insect world, there's hierarchies. There's the queen. There's there's the, and then the the troops. But it's like, oh, I'm gonna be a good little ant right now, and I'm gonna get out my fucking. I'm gonna be at CVS. I'm gonna go inject people because it's right. Even though I'm just being paid to do this, I have no fault. I didn't know. It's like you fucking felt it. You probably liked it. You liked sticking it in the arm and giving it to somebody like that. The same way that a mosquito likes to take the blood. It's the other, only other species that takes blood from humans. Yeah, and what is their purpose? Like we, Correct. We, like we were the, trying to figure that out. What purpose do they serve? They just go around and drink blood. And like usually with any other bug, you can narrow it down to what purpose it serves. But then it's like, well, what's the purpose of the mosquito? And, and at, me with spiders, I say, what the fuck is the purpose of spiders? And people say, oh, they eat the other bugs. I'm like, I don't care about the other bugs. Where's the fucking thing that eats all the goddamn spiders? Do you remember? And you actually put up a clip about it during New Year's. Remember on my talk, I was talking about Jurassic Park and how in 94, when the same Saturn is that, the idea came out in that movie of like a fucking really old mosquito that mm -hmm. had been put into the amber of fucking the fucking whatever it's called from the tree sap. Yeah. And what did they do? They went in there and they extracted the blood mm -hmm. and then they re-engineered by using frog DNA. Yep. So what if they're trying to use the DNA from these mosquitoes of everybody? Hey, there you go. To clone them. Wouldn't surprise me. But it needs to be altered gene. That means they just randomly send them out and it's like, oh, vaxxed blood, perfect. Because you have to have that trigger. Check this out. You can buy that thing on Amazon. Hang on. Oh, that would be just a great thing to carry around. <laughs> you can buy it on Amazon. It's that... Looks like even if you watch uh, Independence Day, the aliens that come out of that, they look like big bugs. Yeah. Like eyes, like bugs. 
It'll trip you out. Nothing would fucking surprise me. Like, how do bugs get in the house? I know that, okay, they can find through cracks, but they know exactly where to go. Yeah. When it gets really hot out, they know exactly if you just leave a fucking soda out and you can be in the cleanest house, brand new house. It doesn't matter if it's old, new. Fucking ants will just start. Mm -hmm. They'll come through the sink. Where do cockroaches come out? Your bathtub. They come out of your fucking drains. Brand new house. You can have fucking... And those cockroaches are... Every part of the bug kingdom is disgusting. <laughs> I don't even find butterflies that great. Because they die within the same day. Yeah. <laughs> so the only beautiful part of that species is I'm going to live for just a day and die. And it has to go through all that transmutation to transmute out of being a bug to be this beautiful thing, but it can only live for a day. Hmm. It's not like you see butterflies just all lined up like birds going, oh, yeah, how was your day? It was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, waiting for the sunrise. Okay, here I go again. I feel like caterpillars are the only part of the bug kingdom trying to evolve out. Yeah. I don't know. Which is why it's in Alice in Wonderland and who are you? Who are you? <laughs> he did it right. But like, there's a lot of clues all over the place. I think we have to start looking more at the clues without a bias. People are so, oh my God, if you, if you, oh, you just said Jesus is a bug. <laughs> That's like people who are like afraid when saying, oh, Jesus is a Jew when he's a Jew. Yeah. It's like, it's like, okay, I'm not saying that Jews are bugs. I'm just saying like, what is the concept? Like we have to relook at all this shit. And, and I think that's where people are. It's too embedded. Knight of Swords. Like it also comes to defense, right? Like, how dare you say that about that? Yeah. Same way that a bug reacts, like the second that you go for a spider and you go for its like web and all that, the way they fucking just, oh my God. When they start spooling down really fast. <laughs> yeah, there's some nasty little fuckers. Yeah, so. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful uh, Halloween and I, 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 I hope that you don't wake up to a huge praying mantis with long hair saying... <laughs> Follow me. That'd be actually kind of cool, though. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I had a little praying Before mantis. Before it eats your face. I had, a, <laughs> I, had a, I had a little praying mantis that I didn't even know when it happened. I got in my truck the other day to go fill my tank up, and when I got in the truck to go home, it was stuck on my mirror. And it was just on my truck mirror. And that little fucker was latched on there because i got on the main road and was doing 60 mile an hour up the main road and the wind was blowing him and he was latched onto my mirror somehow that's the way that the hippocampus in our brain underneath part is the same way that an like, like an an insect alien would attach to our brains to <laughs> never let go <laughs> look it up oh that sounds like fun there's an insect like reptile like that won't let go it doesn't matter how fast you go or what you're doing. That's it's like that's the radio antenna that of course if you were an alien species, what would you do? You would hide in sight. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> the spiders are coming and they already made their injections of their venom and their poisons to mutate. Don't get stuck in that web. No, and I, I, you know, it's like a web of lies. Anytime you die, what comes out of you, larva? <laughs> You're trying to make sure everybody's scared. Why tonight, do all the you? mummies? Why are they all mummified to look like they're fucking insects and how they're wrapped in a like larva? That's a trippy thought. Yeah, so what if the Egyptians were insects? They probably were. So Jesus was an insect. <laughs> Hope you have a wonderful one. Happy Halloween, everyone. Silly. <laughs> <laughs>